and how is the sophistication of U.S. and international smart grids increasing their vulnerability and how do we take measures of protection against cyber attacks? These are questions that today's panelists can shed some light on. With us in the Dell TINL studio is Norma Craham. She's senior policy advisor and also co-chair of cybersecurity and privacy, of the privacy team rather, at Holland and Knight. And Norma, welcome to the program. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Oh, thanks for being here, I hope I got that, that correct. You did, okay. you did a great job. <laughs> it's late in the day, I stumbled, that's okay. You're we okay. Can, we can move on. Yes. Um, let's talk about the sophistication of US-based um, smart grid and critical infrastructure and also um, infrastructures and smart grids overseas as well. Um, and the fact that maybe those infrastructures are becoming more vulnerable as they become more complex. Is that the case? I think it is the case. One of the things that's really interesting when you think about the grid and critical infrastructure in general is the, the massive use of technology and innovation which has done amazing things for us. Energy efficiency, better delivery of service, but that also means we have a little bit of a vulnerability there. We've just connected everything. And so now what we need to do is make sure that we're looking at where those gaps are and we're providing increased security for our grid. Then you've got that connectivity between the grid and other sectors, between the communication sector, information technology, and whether it's the U.S. or around the world, we're starting to see that there are pockets of areas we need to spend more time on because security of the grid is hugely important. I always like to start any uh, security conversation talking about sort of a well-known or notable uh, security mm -hmm. breach really on a mass scale. I think Target would be one of those examples. Is that so right? Target is one, certainly from a consumer perspective, everyone has seen. I think the other one people are starting to pay a lot of attention to is the health sector. A lot of hospitals have been hit, a lot of health insurers. Retail continues to be a target. And then you're starting to see other examples around the world. The Ukrainian grid, that's one that we've all heard a lot about. And then globally in the banking financial services sector, some of the recent attacks on the Federal Reserve and really the global movement of money has been a problem too. So let's just take you know Target as an example. So after the breach, what measure could have they have taken or did they take in order to prevent that from happening again? The Target breach was a really interesting one because some of the vulnerabilities were about connectivity between Target and their vendors. So when you think about what needs to be done, every company needs to look at their vendors, they need to look at um, their supply chain as well, and I think companies need to understand there's sort of three buckets of things you need to think about for your company. It's your people, it's your processes, and your technology. Because at the end of the day, if any one of those fails, then you're going to have a challenge and you're not going to be able to secure at 100% level. So uh, based on sort of those three pillars, um, sort of what advice would you give to a client of yours uh, when it comes to a, a, a major or significant security breach really on a mass scale? Sure. Item number one is you need to prepare for when it's going to happen, right? If it hasn't happened now, it's going to happen in the future. And we spend a lot of time on what we call tabletop exercises planning and making sure that we understand how people will react in an emergency. The second thing is to make sure that they understand that it's an enterprise risk management problem and they need to understand how they can look at the entire company. That's a huge issue. Obviously a lot of companies are heavily regulated and they understand that, but at the end of the day you have to look at it from an all hazards approach, which is you're not going to be able to secure 100%. But if you understand what your risk is and you can manage, mitigate it, and then respond and recover, that's a huge point for every company. We had a, uh, a security panel uh, earlier today, and there was a policy uh, person on the panel, and we asked them about sort of um, give us a behind the scenes of Washington policy making and how they approach security, yeah. not only the security that we're talking about, but NFE right. security and so forth. Is there any kind of like uh, through the looking glass type of um, story or anecdotal story you can give us? You know, uh, it's really hard because I think a lot of the policymakers see things that we don't get to see every day. There are a lot of national security implications for attacks, whether it was on Sony or on our grid. I think people are really worried about a catastrophic cybersecurity attack mm. that cascades into other systems. And so really what's happening in the policy making world is trying to figure out how can you fix different aspects of these regimes to try and make America a safer place. And it's something we're trying to figure out around the world as well, and that's actually a challenging thing to do. So just uh, really quickly before we, before we go, the Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act that was uh, really yes. pushed through last year, mm -hmm. what kind of weight does that hold? I think it holds huge weight. Part of the, as I mentioned, you're trying to break the issue and the problem apart. 
the attackers are attacking all of our companies at the exact same time with the exact same tools. Mm. Uh, if we can make it harder for them, if we can make it more expensive for them, that's how we can get an upper hand. And sharing information is a big piece of that. But privacy is a core aspect of this. And so I think that act has really made people focus more on what that integration of security and privacy means and how do you do both? Because in the end of the day, we have to do both. I don't think we have to pick one or the other. Norman, it was great talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much.